connection. Go. Carl, sorry, you on mute. All oh, right, we're looking at Priory Cave and we're looking at Nab Head in West Wales. So uh, that's that's where we're headed today. And if if I can crack on, um, this is going out on YouTube. So I'm going to um, get the images up here. Uh, if I can get them up. Uh, and screen start and there start video there it is and so we've got this and we've got some google stuff so base basically this is this is in west wales and the, the site itself is in pembrokeshire when when I when I initially came across this site, it was just that um, I, I, I was I was quite fascinated by it because you know we, we talk about we, we we talk about the Mesolithic period and we and you know there's all that you know there's not much evidence from the Mesolithic period, and then you start to look at it and you say well actually there is, and you know this this is a this goes against the grain in that you know when we talk about the mesolithic period now we talk about settlements and we talk about places out in the open and we talk about um um uh, the the warren calendar we talk about the formby footprints and we talk about the wonderful preservation at star car and boulder cliff off the the isle of wight and it's it's moved us away from looking at the cave archaeology actually because cave Evidence in caves just doesn't stop when 12,000 years ago um, and the melt of the ice. So what, what we do find is that we do find that the Mesolithic period sort of sort of opens up and into the realms of evidence everywhere. And people are living in a wide variety of different ways, as we've been discussing. And this is this is the the mouth of the cave today. And I do have uh, an image of the archaeological contexts, which which are equally as fascinating. So, uh, when when we when again we think about the Mesolithic period again and lack of evidence and then we start over and over again we're starting to see more and more and with the excavations at Pembroke Castle as well which isn't obviously far away from the site we, we, we are looking again there that we're finding new stuff today so we're thinking of this site uh, with we're, we're thinking in the in the deep sort of levels of this site the Pri Priory cave location 
and it's also given another name you'll find it under cat's hole cave as well but there's also a cat hole cave on the gower so cat hole cave is a massively interesting paleolithic mesolithic site cave site on the gower but that's without the f this is also known as cat's hole so to stop any problems with sort of the archaeology this is called the priory cave site pembrokeshire so they have been looking at this site since the early 1900s and if not before and there was an antiquarian known as styles and dixon and their work was eventually published and analyzed by the very famous wf grimes grimes is a a name in archaeology back in the 1920s, 30s and 40s and beyond, and also Cowley. So they published in um, the Archaeologia Cambrensis in 1933. And they, they discussed earlier periods, Mesolithic periods and so on and so on. So thinking, how has this been missed? How have we missed this site when we're talking about Mesolithic periods? Surely it should be in all the books, but it's not. It's in none of the, you know, it's, it's, it's not in the books. It's not in the books analyzing the Mesolithic period, which, which is a bit of a shame. And this site is also not just known for evidence from the Mesolithic period. It's got Paleolithic evidence. It's got uh, mammalia evidence in there, human evidence, a Bronze Age, and so on and so on. So when the, when the, when the earliest report was finally published in 1933, obviously, you know, their interpretations from earlier working evidence would have been stunted by the fact that it is the beginning of the 1900s. It is then published in 1933 and they don't have the advent of radiocarbon dating evidence and so on. But from what we do know, the evidence from this cave is as diverse as Brixham Cave on the south coast. So we've got human and animal bones. And the what what we do find is that we we've got a, a complete human skull. We've got a little bit of a plan that we're going to look at. Several portions of um, lower mandible, human lower mandible, pieces of limb bones from human beings, ribs and vertebra, and obviously a wide range of evidence throughout the ages, Paleolithic period, all the way through to more recent times, of mammoth bones, bear, reindeer. Red deer, wolf, the remains of horse, ox, badger, sheep, goat, fox, hare, and mammoth has all been found within this cave. Lots of the reconstructions have actually sort of shown this and people living in the mouth of the cave. But, but obviously there would have been a lot more back then, 10,000 years ago, and a lot earlier. So this itself is the plan of, it's 30 metres in length, the archaeology at least that we know about. And... There's a hyena den in there. Now, we, we, we come across the word hyena den, hyena's lair and hyena's cave in places like the Gower and also places like Brixham on the south coast. And what we do find is that hyenas are little stars of history in their own right. You know, humans are taking animals in caves for various different reasons and their own find in caves. And then we're seeing hyenas as well. And, you know, one of the things that we don't do enough of is looking at the um, fauna and, 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 and the wide diverse of animal remains that we find in these caves. We're thinking, well, how did the remains of a mammoth get in there? How did the remains of um, sort of reindeer and red deer get in there? And you're thinking, well, a mammoth's not going to get in there. But did humans take the bones in there? Did 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 hyenas take the bones in there? Bears take the bones in there? What's going on? So what we've also got is, you know, we, we've got the remains also of Bronze Age evidence, um, great, wonderful Bronze Age evidence, which will come, come back in another lecture because we're obviously doing the Mesolithic period today. So important finds include fine sets of flints um, of a great national importance um, and also Bronze Age implements um, consisting of bronze chisel, um, axes, even a saw um, to be one of the only Bronze Age saws ever found in Britain. But what, what, we, what we're finding and what we're thinking about this little bit of a plan is absolutely amazing. And we, we've got a more gen about this as well. 
So let's look at little look at this plan. 30 meters in depth. When we talk about 30 meter depth in a cave, we mean length rather than down below. Big chunks of it haven't been excavated, though so that, that's a big plus. It's a scheduled protected ancient monument, big plus. And one, one of the things that I went into when we did this on Tuesday was to explain uh, what this scheduling and protected ancient monuments is all about. And, and what I usually say is that all all sites that are Paleolithic in Britain are immediately scheduled protected ancient monuments because they're so rare. Uh, most, if not all, Mesolithic sites are scheduled protected ancient monument monuments. Not all Neolithic and not all Iron Age. And then you, you then it goes down in, into it that you get to the medieval period and lots of medieval sites are not even given any protection at all because they they because when we think about Mesolithic sites, they they are unique examples, but I, I tell you what, there's gonna, there's so much Mesolithic being found now that it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's like a sweetie shop for somebody who's interested in the Mesolithic period, like us guys. So again, if we, if we look at that little bit of a plan, number one, number one, number, layer number one. If you go down to layer number one there, that's going to contain all the fairly modern stuff, you know, all the fairly modern. Um, detritus and so on that's sort of bits of modern mammal bones and birds and so on and then what we've got we've got layer two which is full of all your sort of um, evidence from sort of other prehistoric periods other than say mesolithic and paleolithic so number two number two that's that's all your sort of um that, that's your bronze age evidence that's your middens even shell middens from this period as well not just from earlier periods they are shell middens um, in the Bronze Age and so on. Um, remains of ox, horse, reindeer. So obviously how these bones are making it in there is probably due to a load of different activity. And then you go down to number three. Number three is basically your very early stuff. Um, and the reason why you've got a, a modern wall in there is that's basically to protect the other archaeology that's been built in more modern times to protect the other archaeology. If you look at the top plan, it shows you that's where the hyena's den is. Bits of hyena bones, bits of bones that have been gnawed on by the hyena, job done. Towards the mouth of the cave, evidence of a complete human skull, lots of other evidence of human remains in there as well. Um, a G, lots of Gs. There's, there's a G there, a G there. Lots of bits of human remains throughout the dotted throughout the cave as well. Um, very interesting. If we go back up there, we, we can see H, H. Uh, is indicating the stalagmite layer, stalactites down, stalagmites up. So the stalagmite layer, that's sort of the lowest layer that they know about in the cave. Um, and again, fascinating to think that, that there's so much more in there that hasn't been excavated. And, and probably leave it until we can sort of analyse this a lot more and, and understand it a lot, lot more as well. So... What what we what we can say next is that uh, I want to look at another little bit of an entry about Priory Cave. This, this is fascinating. It sort of um, gives a little bit more sort of depth. So again, it, it's basically the location. If you go into Pembroke, uh, it, you go over the bridge into Pembroke. Um, oh, there's several bridges into Pembroke. If you come down from Pembroke Dock. Go into Pembroke Town, just as you go over the bridge, over on the, over on the right is where the cave is, in a load of bushes. So that's where it is. Easy. Job done. Find it. But uh, again, again, this is a site that sort of opens up these sort of um, corpuscles and sort of makes you think and think, wonder, why don't we hear more about this? Why don't we hear about... You know what, Steve, I... I OK, if you if you if you wanted to put me on the spot and you want to say, right, um, 10 months ago and you said, right, do 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 the Mesolithic period now. I would I would do I, I would do a, a, a star car. I may have done one or two islands in the Hebrides. I wouldn't have known about Boulder Cliff. I would have done the footprints off the um, South Wales coast. I wouldn't have known about Formby because they didn't exist. Um, I'd done hoik, definitely done hoik, but I wouldn't have known about the evidence of building Staffan Island on the Hebrides. I wouldn't have known about the other evidence, um, which is near Formby of buildings. I wouldn't have known about them. 
I, I certainly would have known about these. So we could have done the Mesolithic, but it, it, it just, there would have been so much missing. So again, yeah. again, Anne, where have you been? We're, we're really into Sorry. the Mesolithic period. You've ruined I... my life. Where, where is it? You know, is it on the coast or is it in Pembrokeshire? The Pembrokeshire. If you go into Pembroke, it's basically near the centre of the town. Oh right. Well, when I say near the centre of the town, it's just outside Pembroke, um, on the um, sort of western side. And you, and it's it's on the coast. More or less, yeah. Oh, I just thought it might have been in the Priscilla Hills or something. No, no, it it wouldn't have been about, it wouldn't have been on the coast back then. By the way, we haven't All really right. looked in the we haven't really looked in the Priscilla Hills for these types of sites. This, this is the thing we 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 haven't really looked at. No, but but, well, but again. It, there's a nor not a lot of um this is all new evidence that you're finding, you know. Well, to, to be honest with you, it's new to our lectures. It, it's it's I think what's happening is that as I just said, as I just said, if if I was if if I had just sort of said you put me on the spot and you said, right, let's just do the Mesolithic for the next five weeks, right? I would have had enough. I wouldn't have had enough for um for six months. All oh, right. There's just no way. I, I, it's just, and some of the stuff, i.e., the the footprints at Formby. Interesting enough, they they've actually just reissued the press release from Formby, and they said it's just been found now. Uh, when in fact we've just been doing it since the 31st of May. So um, you know that's when mm -hmm. I can remember when we did when we started doing the footprints um, from Formby. They had been discovered a couple of days before. And this is how, oh my God, this is how long we've been doing the Mesolithic period. Because it was the 31st of May. And I think we it was like a Monday or something like that. And, and we were doing this on Thursday. So this is how new the Formby stuff was this year. And there anyway, was what I want to do, what, what, what I want to do again, um, so we haven't got all day on this, right? So again, look, look at those bits of human mandible. Um, so... The monument, the monument itself, um, is to be seen stretching throughout all the dearth of archaeological periods, from the Paleolithic period all the way into the early medieval period, and maybe you know a bit bit closer in time than that. Um, and we think about the cave itself. Obviously, we're interested in the Mesolithic period today. Um, and again, this is this is a typical site that's got everything from all the years. It's it's like a time capsule of of of, of evidence, mm. you know. So what we've got the cave throughout its time has been used for occupation. It's been used for storage throughout its time. Various burials over different times. People have dumped stuff in there over different times. Temporary shelter at different times. It's been used for different loads of different reasons. And you did ask, Priory Cave is located. Uh, at the base of a low cliff on the valley side overlooking the Pembroke River that flows directly into Pembroke itself. Mm. The entrance to the cave is six metres wide. So if we go back to that one, there we go. Six metres wide mm. goes, into, goes into the rock for 30 metres. It was excavated at the turn of the 1900s, but it was only understood and recorded in as, as a site of Paleolithic and Mesolithic importance in 1933 by, by uh, our Mr. Grimes. The assembly also included finds from the Mesolithic and the Bronze Age. Oh my God. Sorry guys, Grimes. Gr Grimes, Gr <laughs> No, Grimes, G-R-I-M-E-S. Guess who's Grimes. related? Guess who's related? to somebody called Grimes. Me. Oh. Oh my God. FW Grimes. Grimes. No. Oh no, it, it can't it can't it can't be. It's too it's too, it's too much of a coincidence. Oh my god, I got sorry, I've gone off on one. I, I yeah, carry on with the archaeology. Right. So the assemblage also included also included um, Bronze Age evidence, lots of human and faunal remains, loads of it. The faunal assemblage is thought to have predated the human population as well. So, so this is the interesting thing, sort of the hyena's den, what's going on there, um, and all that. 
Uh, and there has been more recent work in 1999, and it discovered evidence of flint processing and a Bronze Age shell midden. Ah, hang on a minute, Bronze Age. We didn't think they had shell middens in the Bronze Age. Yes, they did. The monument is of national importance um, for its potential to enrich our knowledge of prehistoric settlement, ritual, and funerary practice. And it also retains significant archaeological potential with a strong probability of the presence of associated archaeological features and deposits. The scheduled area, area comprises the remains described and areas around them within which related evidence may be expected to survive. So this is an amazing site. Um, and again, it is of national importance. That, that There's the skull. That, that, there's the skull. So um, we just got to set something up. No, I would say it wouldn't have been seen. It was. It would have been not in a river. It, it would have been no. a, a valley, it, it, almost. It, exactly. It, exactly. So, uh, you know, it, it 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 would have been far away from the modern day coast today. Yeah. Uh, and um, and this site itself showing all the hallmarks of a site of, of, of major importance. This is a bit like Brixham. Obviously, there's more stuff at Brixham. There's more layers. There's more area to excavate. You've seen the massive cave at Brixham, right? Yeah. But we're talking about the same type of, of, of archaeology. And I, I like to think that if they, if they had a team of archaeologists like for like working here and at Brixham at the same time with the same scientists, mm. there would be massive parallels and comparisons. Mm. You know, it's 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 it, 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 it's major archaeology. It's 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 a major importance. So what we're going to do now? Um, th there's there's our skull, um, and there's some of the lower mandibles. They found a few of these lower mandibles actually. Um, they, they 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 found more than the more than a couple. Um, so what what we are going to do? Uh, and I just wanted to. There it is. What's wrong with this image? Well. They're, they're portraying this as one thing, the scale of the image is wrong, right? Because this is six meters across and that woman's not sort of, that woman would be a, um, more or less two meters across, wouldn't you? So, so they got this wrong. It's just a bit of a, um, and that's, looks that's going to be going to be completely wrong for the Paleolithic period in a really much deeper cave. But again, this is from 1933. So, um, what I'd like to do is look at another site now. I'd, I'd, I'd like to look at, I'd, actually, I'd like to show you uh, this. I, I'd like to show you this again. Again, uh, number five is where we're going to go next. Um, if you go a little bit further over from four, that little black dot is the site that we've looked at, Pembroke. Pembroke, right? But when you look at this, you think this is actually only only some of the Mesolithic sites that we know of across the whole of Wales. Lots of concentrations in the coast. But have you noticed lots of concentrations far inland as well? Mm. Back to the point that we were making the other week, that lots of people are living far inland in the Mesolithic period. And that's why we're now mm -hmm. finding their evidence. So if we if we move away from that, uh, and what we are going to do is we're going to look at this site. Now, we we had some really enigmatic images to look at last week, and I, I didn't I didn't sort of want to change this. Um, and we're looking at some beautiful Im images from uh, the Covline uh, Royal Commission on Ancient Historical Monuments. So. We've 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 finished Priory Cave now anyway, so that's that. That's that. I'm just clearing stuff as I go along, um, and we're now going to look at this wonderful site known as Nab's Head. And I'm just getting my I'm just getting my information up on you. There we go, and. The one thing, the one thing that we can say about Nam's Head is it, this is a massively important Mesolithic landscape as well. And, and again, had I heard of it um, six months ago? No, I hadn't heard of it. I, I didn't. I didn't know this even existed. 
Uh, and again, this this is a this is a massively uh, important site, a hugely important site. Nabs said it it, it it goes up there with uh, with with you know the the, the form the evidence. It goes up there with Boulder Cliff. It, it it's it fascinating archaeological evidence. We don't spend as much time as I want to on Nabs Head, um, but we do enough. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to just I'd like to scroll down again just quickly. Uh, we'll come up with these images in a moment. Hang on, hang on. There we go. There's a specific image of something I want to show you. Hang on, go images. Hang on, hang on. We're we're getting problems with this. Hang on, images. Slowly, 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 slowly. These are from Cobline. These, mm. that, that there. Mm. Uh, they they found hundreds of these little pebbles, and they're only small, um, two centimeters across. We're, they're about three, four mm. millimeters um, in thickness, right? Um, and listen to this, right? Listen to this headline, right? Site of Mesolithic axe and bead factory at Nabs Head in West Wales. Let's, let's just let's just read the word factory. Factory. Now, hang on a minute, right? Hang on. Axe factories, Neolithic period. Um, flint mines, uh, Grimes graves, Neolithic period. Penman Meyer, um, metamorphic rock rock axe factories, right? Neolithic. We don't get these in the Mesolithic period, but we do. In other words. We're talking about many, many more things going on in the Mesolithic period than I ever, ever dreamed. Many, many more people living in the Mesolithic period um, uh, across Britain than I ever, ever dreamed. Archaeologists have found many thousands of flint um, axe heads on this promontory and fragments, little fragments have all been napped away, indicating that it was a major manufacturing site in the Mesolithic period 8,000 years ago, no, 10,500 years ago. Let's repeat that, 10,500 years ago. If that's the, no, stop, stop, I go, naughty word. That being the case, the Mesolithic period must have occurred a lot earlier than we think. Because if you've got mass napping of both flint and chert, and you've got these little pebbles, which have been made into little beads. This has been going on for a very long time. You don't suddenly say, oh, we're going to start napping flint. And by the way, we've got Tesco's down the road that we can supply with all the flint that we need to supply them with. No, that doesn't happen. So again, those points said, also found here, not just the, not also, also found here is other little bits of evidence as well. But the decorative beads alongside the tools tell us that this site is massively important to our understanding of the Mesolithic period. Um, and you know what? You know what we're gonna do, right? We're gonna we're gonna uh, we haven't done this for a couple of weeks, right? But we're gonna we're gonna absorb ourselves in Google a minute. Hang on. Just, let's just absorb ourselves in Google. Let's absorb, let's type in Nab's head. Type in Nabz Ed. Wasn't going to do this, but I am. Right, we're going to uh, we're going to just look at the new book. Uh, we, there we go. Go. Simbrights Bay. Yep. Mm. Look at those. Mm. Look at them. They, they found hundreds of them. Yeah. Hundreds, hundreds of them. Um, and it's just like thinking, you know, there. Yeah. Well. It, it is um, getting closer to, like, you know, the, the site in the Gower. Yeah, well, actually, when you think about it, we, we, the evidence of um, our sites on the Gower from the Paleolithic period, right, we've still got a few thousand years dis distance, a walking distance. However, what you just said is, is something that archaeologists wouldn't want to believe. Oh, no. Now, hang on. 
I said wouldn't want to believe, right? No. I didn't say um, shouldn't believe and don't believe, right? If you're talking about a continuous culture for, for tens of thousands of years in Britain, Mm. and that the ice didn't have as major impact as we're saying oh did i just say that i've never said that before in fact i never ever have i've never said that what i've just said um the ice didn't have as major impact as we think therefore there may have been much bigger human populations which were continuous and that would explain why we've got all people on islands in scotland and they were able to and when we've got evidence in ireland now What's that evidence? And I don't I think you missed our lecture on Ireland. I'm not sure. We, we, we did some stuff in Ireland. We've done Ireland a couple of times. Um, and it was like we were looking on the Shannon, um, the Shannon River coastline on the uh, west coast of Ireland, as you know, Anne. Um, yeah. And we were we were looking at uh, the Hermitage site and the Hermitage site was like, oh, uh, we've got cremations. And we're thinking, how the friggin hell have we got cremations in, in Ireland yeah. in the early Mesolithic period? When people have just arrived and nobody else is promoted, and, and we're just thinking there's something missing, Anne, right? So keep that thought and, and just let it evolve. Leave it there, leave it for another day. And you're right. And what you just said could be opening a, a can of very interesting worms. Mm. Yeah. So I want to I want to go to uh, you know, I, I, I want us to think of this period as being very different from this. Right. I want to think of it more organized. Right. I want to think it as as the, if they no, no, as they. OK. Right. Let's not use the word if. Right. This isn't somebody doing this on a Wednesday afternoon. This is a group of people doing mm. this over. Well, Hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing as well is, one thing that I did chuck in the mix on, on Tuesday was that these are the ones that were discarded or left behind. These were the ones that weren't traded, right? So that means they must have produced tens, if not hundreds of thousands of these things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing as well is, it was the discussion. W were they just beads? Were they, were they fishing weights? I, I said loom weights and somebody said, oh, they can't be loom weights. And I just thought, well, yeah, but if you stack the load of them together. Anyway, the point is, whatever they are, they're being produced and used and, and they are part of the society of the Mesolithic world. Right. So what we need to do, we need to go to those images because we can't we can't do this without those images. But, and I will apologize if we if we don't have enough time today. Right. And we, and we just think, well, you know, we'll let, let's just call it a day at uh, quarter, um, quarter two or whatever. Well, I don't mind. Right. We, we, it, we, we are, we, we've had a good innings today anyway. So I'm just going to, um, oh God, where, where, are we, we're just, uh, just trying to get, oh, hang on there, there. Okay. We're just going to go. Um, I've just lost my, my image at the minute. Hang on. I've just lost where I was. So if I if I go back to there, I've just missed it a minute. We don't want Little Avon. Um, Simbrice yeah. Bernie or Coughlin? Coughlin, yeah, Coughlin, yeah. Habitat. Coughlin, and we've got there. Bingo, I love it. Um, well, I don't 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 know if you wanted to just chuck that in and 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 look at. The, I'll give you an idea where this is as well. So there it is. There it is, Nam Z. And interestingly mm -hmm. enough, it's near Marlos Bay, which is where you've got the tree stumps. Yeah. That's oh, I love I've been there. It's fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It was great, wasn't it? That was the day that um that was the day that um that was the day that, that woman I was seeing back then called Michelle and Whitney turned up and they were in the same car having a row over me. We don't want to we don't like you, 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 you were couldn't have been on that trip. I like didn't go with you. No, I went with my husband, uh, and we went in yeah. the sea. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 what we did. Michelle was in the car with her son, right? Um, and it was in, um, it was that it was the day, and and there was Whitney in the same car, right? In oh. on the back seat beside each other, right? Oh. I was seeing both of them. Oh, <laughs> not a good idea. It wasn't a good idea. They they ended up having a huge row. Um, and one of them took all their clothes off and ran into the sea. 
Oh, that was Whitney. Whitney. <laughs> hey, Steve, you've missed yeah. all the interest. You've missed all the interesting stuff about archaeology, Cabri. I was going to say that that that, that I didn't I didn't get that memo. <laughs> this is a long time ago. It was a long time ago. And, and what it is is there, Pembroke Dock, Pembroke there, Pembroke. If we sort of go a little bit further over from Pembroke there, um, just over by there where you've got the little marshy bit, that's where that's where this the other site is, um, Priory. Right. So if we if we want to go back out, we go back there. We just go, we'll just scroll down the images. It's great. I love I love I love this. Um, in fact. The first, this is the first time I've ever sort of used Covline in this way because it's just some so great images. So there, that's the area there, there, yeah. that, that sort of wall area. Mm -hmm. That's where the first flints were first noticed after a storm that had eroded, mm -hmm. uh, the eroded topside in the 1880s. Now, we believe that people have been going there to collect these beads uh, and it's caused a lot of damage. Now, it's likely that the site extends all the way across Nam's head. Ask me the question, why do we excavate it all? Well, if you excavate all of that, it means that the, the turf cover will be damaged. Yeah. The root system won't reestablish. And that will, be, that will erode so fast that that will be an island and eroded away in no time. That's old mm. red sandstone. So, you, so mm. the, only bit that you, the only bit that you can do in the archaeology is in the area that's exposed. And that's all we need to do. Remember, archaeologists have got to be, you know, we, we, archaeology, if we dug everywhere where archaeologists would be another cause of global warming, right? Anyway, so in the 1920s, apparently they found a little figurine, which, which I haven't dug out an image amongst the beam, a be, beads. And a dig in 1979 brought to light no fewer than, wait for it, 12,000 flint fragments. Right? 12,000 flint fragments. And if you wander around there now, um, you, you can find loads of them. But, right. but anyone else watching this, don't try it and bugger up the archaeology. Most, most of the flints were made by shaping pebbles from the coast. So if we can go back to one of these flints, little, little image, let's slowly do that so I don't lose them. There they are. They're really bad quality um, flint modules and shirt modules. Those, the one, these look like shirt to me. These are shirt. Yeah. Anyway, flint and shirt, right? Two different, um, but they're, they're from pebbles. Um, and they believe that these pebbles were collected from beaches, which once then existed nearly three miles away. And this was obviously this was obviously ten thousand years ago. The sea hadn't even reached the coastline yet. So the raised ground here would have provided good views across the surrounding landscape, but no remains of a human settlement have been found. That, that this is the area that they're looking at. So if we if we look at that there, uh, but it, it 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 could be very likely that the human settlements ain't far away because when we. Uh, when we looked at this, um, when, when we were looking at this on uh, Tuesday, um, Andy was saying, well, if you look, there's lots of, if you, if you look at that image there, you can see a very weird, strange patterned landscape with little mounds and stuff. Any of them could be a mid mound, right? Any mm. of them. And, and we're just thinking, well, yeah, what we've done. We can't really excavate there. Let's just focus on the job at hand. Let's just focus there. So the, the, this raised ground would have provided good views across the surrounding landscape. Um, tools found here including blades, drill bits, and scrapers for cleaning skins. Let's just rewind drill bits. Those drill bits are going to be used to make the holes in the beads. Mm. Right. So if, if we... If we go back, I, I don't want to. I don't want to muck around too much with these. These this. So I want to just go down to that. These beads. Lo loads of little beads like this. So this isn't completed. You can clearly see that this isn't completed. They didn't completely drill through this. Probably somebody said it's a, it's not the shape we want, right? So we just discard it. They found seven hundred beads that we know about have been found at Nam's head. Maybe thousands have been found over time. But people have just 
taken them away and you know and just thought oh this is a nice curious little thing but it was created in the mesolithic period uh, these tiny pebbles about two millimeters to three millimeters in thickness with holes drilled through the middle uh, beads have been found at other mesolithic sites in britain could they have come from here could they have been traded drilling the minute holes with the tools available would have been skilled work it's thought the beads were status symbols and may have been traded between groups of people in different areas. Now, one one of one of the things one of the things with that one of the things with that we we think well th th there's a few complicated words there trade um, the idea of skills the idea of manufacture all of these things we didn't think happened in the Mesolithic period but they did. They did. End of. Let's, let's just not even go there. They did. This is what they did in the Mesolithic period. But there's no other way of looking at it. This was this was the Mesolithic world. And I do believe there's a nice little image amongst what he's looking at there. The, there are lots of chits and flint across there. If we get, there's another really interesting loads of images of Nab's head. Oh, that's what I wanted. Look at that. In fact, what you're seeing is everything that's not red is either a bit of chert or a bit of flint that has actually um, come, come into the site. It's absolutely amazing. And, and these things are still being found. And, uh, you know, it, it's... I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read out what the Royal Commission on Ancient Historical Monuments says about this site. Right, and... And what I was saying, what I was saying... Oh, you can't join us next week, can you, Anne? No. Where are you again? Uh, San Sebastian. Don't oh, right. Ah, uh, hey. Valencia, yeah. I hope. I hope. You will be there. there. Right, if, you, if you're coughing and spluttering, don't, don't say that you got COVID because they won't let you in. Just go. It's, it's not every day your daughter gets married. No. It's the first time your daughter's ever been married. It is, yes. This is it still nine. time? Is it still time for her to have babies? Do you know? I mean, he's old. <laughs> <laughs> he might be uh, too old. How, how old is he? Forty-six. And how old? How old is? Oh um, no, he's not. He's forty-eight. Um, so how how old is Mary? Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. In fact, she's a bit old, really, too. Oh, she could still have children. I don't know. I don't know if that's what I think she's found. She found someone to look after. <laughs> Perhaps she okay. don't need to have the babies. Fair enough. You can have a dog. But anyway, so look more information about. Um, so Nabhead is one of of the more prominent of the many small headlands. Oh my along god! The... I just realised what I just said. I'm sorry. What? It's okay. No. Carry carry on. Don't, don't worry, she won't be watching this anyway. Uh, so, so Nabhead is one of the more prominent of the many small headlands along the irregular perimeter of the Skoma Peninsula, which divides St. Bride's Bay to the north from Milford Haven to the south. The headland thus lies almost at the farthest southwest extremity of Wales, forming a small northward facing. This is old red sandstone. The, the, thing, the thing is, this, this site itself is, is one of the furthest west bits of evidence from mainland Britain of the Mesolithic period. So this, this is really important. So Nab Head is about 100 metres uh, long. There's a 100 metre long promontory uh, by 40 metres uh, at the most. And even just in that small area there, in, in, in terms of the whole area, um, they, they found quite a lot of evidence, obviously surrounded by cliffs and abrupt edges today. However, this would have been, this would have been part of a rolling hill network. This has all been eroded away. So it's the neck there. That they call that the neck where they've, there they've got lots of evidence. And it, it, they do believe at one stage in the future, that's going to sort of erode away. And that's that's going to be a little island in itself. Um, it'll be eventually an isolated bit of headland, which will be an island. So this, this soil that's there is eating into 
the post-glacial soil. And the post-glacial soil, what that soil itself was immediately formed after the retreat of the um, um, ice, um, after the retreat of the ice. Bring it on to the Mesolithic period, the Mesolithic landscape. And again, we have to think about the this sort of practicalities of knowing this site to be really important of, of massive mesolithic work um and a, and the flints the flints were noted i i, I think I, I think it's very important that the flints were noted you can imagine loads of people going there and taking the other sort of um stones the little holes in them um in sort of pagan circles they'd be called hang stones where you find up a, an eroded um, stone from the beach and there's a hole and it. it's called a hang stone right oh. well people could think of that and and because obviously they've been there for some time, the erosion, they might look like they've just, they, they were collected off a beach, but they were manufactured there. So mm. these were first noticed after some gales uh, by a certain Edward Laws in 1880. And there's word of warning here, right? There might be dozens of these sites up and down the coast, but because of the delicate nature of the, the um, grasses, we dead lift up the grasses to see what's underneath because the grasses are not going to re-establish themselves any again i could give you a bit of uh, an example of that uh, at sully island mm -hmm. in the vale of glamorgan there were there was lots of metal detecting going on and what they would do they would dig holes and they wouldn't fill the holes up vis-a-vis -vis, big chunks of um sully island are now eroding away because of people digging holes there um, it, it just needs a little bit and everything starts to erode away. It's really delicate. It's a really delicate landscape. So stones and beans were noticed in 1880 by an Edward Law, um, uh, which he then said, uh, this must be some kind of a factory, which a certain um, Colonel Lambton, who was also working there, um, started to come to the same conclusion. Then further work in the 1920s by a Gordon Williams found 300 piece, 300 lithics and a famous figurine, which, I, which I've not seen an image of, discovered in close association with at least nine beads. So it's all dating to the Mesolithic period, a figure from the Mesolithic period. It sounds great. What we're going to do after, after we've, we've done this little bit, I'm, I'm going to just see if we can maybe find something of that figurine. So it'd be Nab's head figurine. So we'll give it a go. So some, some more trenches were excavated in the 1960s and 1970s by a chap by the name Wayne Wright. Wayne Wright claimed the site had been largely destroyed by erosion and also damage caused by private collectors. So what private collectors were going in there, mo moving some of the turfs, trying to find some artifacts, the turfs would never reroute and that would cause more damage. So we I don't know how much of that area and obviously bits of it have been eroded into the sea since. I don't know how much of that area is actually um, being caused by natural erosion or deliberate erosion, um, but probably both. Mm. So inspection of the site in 1978 confirmed the artefacts, um, uh, the beads, the figurine probably, um, and the lithics, the flint and the chert, all dating to the Mesolithic period. And again, excavated there in 1979, um, a certain... Um, 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 Dr. David and Benson uh, working there, excavating an area of 186 square meters, which isn't a massive area actually. Um, and the, so they recovered covered those 12,000 flints, and further work was carried out in 1980. But that's not it. So a little bit, a little bit more information is, is that. The work in, work in 1979, 1980 found um, 12,000 um, flints, right? Um, and I think they're actually flint flint. And it, um, because the chert comes, chert comes under this. Altogether, stone evidence found there, including the little stone discs, which are, which are your beads, right? They found 39,863 bits of stone, flint, chert, all together at the site, and this um, nearly forty thousand uh, bits of evidence that that's got to indicate fa a factory. It's got mm -hmm. to. It's not the activities of somebody on a Wednesday afternoon, you know, wanting to sort of mm -hmm. make a few few things. 
So out of that, there were specific 155 blades and um, 143 micro lifts. So they're making micro lifts there. So, you know, scrapers, 114 of them, um, a little axes and so on. Um, up until 1990, 692 beads had been found altogether throughout, you know, recorded throughout history. Um, and, and most of them, uh, most of the ones that they they found are not complete. They're, they're damaged. They're, they're, they're broken. They found out of that, uh, 692, 64 um, have been excavated. 60, 60, um, 64. So the rest are sort of damaged or there's some. In, in... So that means that they're making them there and they're, they're no good. And they're just sort of leaving them there. Like, this is crap. Chuck it over there and make another one. So these are all. These are all discs of small, smooth, gray, uh, blue, gray shale, identical, identical to specimens that can be collected uh, from beaches. So they've been taken to the site, uh, no more than about two to three millimeters thick. And most of them are sort of subangular. Most of them ain't, ain't circular, uh, with a few exceptions. They are, they are perforated by a central hole. U-shaped in section and drilled from one face only. Or the I'm gonna I'm gonna come into this now myself because those types of pebbles are not the types of pebbles that we would find off Barry Island, uh, off off Pebbly Beach in Barry. The, the the pebbles of Pebbly Beach in Barry um, are Carboniferous and Lias limestone, right? Um, and they're not little flat discs. You do come across occasional flat discs, but not many of them. Um, I'm a skimmer. Um, and I really struggle to find little small pebbles which I can toss into the sea, right? Um, uh, don't make any jokes about me being a tosser, right? But I, I'm a skimmer, so I'd skim them into the sea, but I don't find many around the South Wales coastline. So therefore, they're not, they're quite rare down this neck of the woods, but there's lots of them there. So obviously, they're going to be trading them with, with people, and those, they, those people are then are going to just want them um and, and, and whatever they're being used for so it's now 8 39 and i wanted to do more tonight but um we're, we're slowly getting to the end so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to i'm not going to do the other the other stuff um we, we, we could do that again the 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 isle of man stuff is 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 another half an hour 30 40 minutes so we, we, we just don't have time for that tonight uh, but what I am going to do is we'll we'll have another little scroll through these images. Quite really en enigmatic landscape. This is all on Covline. You can look at these. Obviously, that excavation area. I know we've seen these, but this is the excavated area. Working at the site, obviously, there's a lot more to be seen and to be found and to be discovered there. Obviously, lots are going to be eroded down into the sea below. And then it's going to be very difficult to work out whether... They're hagstones or not, but you can probably work out that they've been drilled through. So there they are examining. Um, and there they are sort of looking looking in amongst all the evidence. Um, obviously, lot, lots more. So obviously, again, looking at these images, uh, all the things that are probably, you know, all the little bits of red sandstone, but you can see the bits of this, that's a bit of chert there. That's obviously our, our, our drill stone. That, that's another bit of uh, non-red sandstone there. So there's there's lots of this stuff. Um, and again, I keep clicking the wrong thing. So I'll go to the end of the screen and where are we? Yeah, some really nice images on here. So what we're going to do now, we're, we're going to, um, I'm going to type in, right? See if we can find this figurine. So Nam Head, if we type in Mesolithic, figurine we'll call it. So if we can find it, if not, it doesn't matter. Figurine. Figurine. So let's give it a go. Would help if I spelt it right, figurine. Give it a go. See if we can find it. Right, images. Uh, no. No, that's amber. No, we're not getting it. We're getting anything other than the object. 
These are all from other sites. That's from other sites. Is that it? Oh, hang on. I do believe that's it. It's not what I expected. Yeah. Oh, it, it, <laughs> yeah, that is it. That's the figure eight. Yeah. Isn't it? Is that, is that the one? Oh, no, it's not. That's from a blooming Danish site. No, that's not it. That's not, that's not it. No, that's from a Danish site. No. Mm. Oh, the Norwegian site. No, that's not it. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, um, what we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll if if you you can well, we could go on a bit further, but we're still really not going to finish the the Isle of Man one tonight. So if if we if we call it a day now, if if that's okay with everybody, yeah, that's good. Yeah, good. We could we could do the other one again. So. Uh, Right, Steve, next week, are you able to do uh, Friday morning with Goff? Uh, no, because I think we're going to... Um... Oh, shit, you'll be with me. Oh, no, well, you won't be with me because you would have got you. Um, right, OK. Uh, don't worry, we'll sort something out. We we'll sort something out. We'll have a chat about it. Well, what I'll do, I'll work, I'll work out who is available next. Um, work out who is available next uh, Thursday after 7 um and then we'll go from there but we, we are doing the lecture at six anyway steve okay yeah, cool cool right okay so okay we'll we'll, we'll call that a, we'll, we'll we'll just see if there's any questions so i was just fascinated by the shape that's all just seems very much like that plectrum sort of shape you know yeah they, they but... made that um pendant out of you know but Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the little ones from Star Car. Yeah, but it yeah, didn't have a hole in it. Yeah, it did have a hole in it, it but the hole was uh, towards the edge oh. rather than oh, the centre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did, it did have a hole in it. Yeah. It did. Yeah, it's difficult to know what they are, really. Um, you know, there's something about them looked like weights or coins or something, you know, but. They're not coins, are they? But no. Just... Maybe they were used. Maybe they were used as bangles on a on a wrist. Yeah, they're not very attractive, though. But <laughs> well, they may they have been to them. Stones. <laughs> they, they 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 may have been to them though. Do you think? Yeah. Well, well, they could have been painted. They could have been decorated. They yeah, could have been anything. Could have been, yeah, they could have been painted. Can I, can I, my kids used to love painting stones. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you mentioned trading. What, uh, where, where would be the most likely places that they were traded? And would that involve sea travel or was that across land then? Well, th this th we, we were talking about this the other week, a, a few times actually, and the easiest way to get around is going to be by water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because this isn't a matter of going across land, which is heavily wooded. Uh, you, you're not going to you're not going to find any people who are going to kill you. What is going to kill you is not going to be human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you. I tell you what. If if you're slightly in an open clearing and you come across a pack of wolves and there's five of you and there's twenty wolves, you're dead. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the easiest way to travel would be by via boat, and you're not going to mm -hmm. come across. You're not going to come across any of those beasties, are you? So you you you'd go you go go by boats, and we do have lots of evidence of boats and and mm. um, you know and, and that type of travel from the Mesolithic period at Boulder Cliff and and Star Car, uh, yeah. and you know people are getting around that this is, you know it, it, it's oh the other thing as well is it's not it's going to be quite a calm landscape to travel. There's going to be lots of reams and lots of rivers and. And the water level is going to be a hell of a lot lower. You're not going to have the type of winds and the currents that, that we have around our coast today. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was, um, uh, Timothy Spale, Timothy Spale has actually got a, um, oh God, a um, an ocean, um, oh God, hang on. I've got to get this right. Uh, there's a reason for this. He's got an ocean um, barge. That's right. 
and basically he sailed around the the actor Timothy Spall. He sailed around the coast in his barge, and he kept yeah. on saying, "I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it," but he did. But there was lots of choppy water. But that now is very different from them, and it would have been it would have been fairly doable. Um, I'm not saying they would have circumnavigated Britain because you can imagine that it would have been quite a big task because it's much bigger landscape to circumnavigate and you would have had to have circumnavigated all the way around Ireland if, if you know, so where was the land there would bridge? Have been, say that again? Where was the land bridge? When did the land bridge go? This is this is the big debate and um, yeah. You get yeah. two archaeologists in a room. You, you get four archaeologists in a room. We'll all have a different theory. The land bridge up near south of the um, Isle of Man, oh, um, no. sort of that sort of area, um, or included the Isle of Man, or there was no land bridge, or the other way to look at it is if there's trees um, underneath the Irish Channel, then it was just basically all linked. Yeah. Or there was it's... no land bridge. But the thing, the thing is. If there's no land bridge, it makes it even more interesting mm. because it makes Ireland look OK. Let's let's just take that back a bit. If if the land bridge was lost 20,000 years ago, right, mm -hmm. and there's populations of people in Ireland 12,000 years ago, it's a bit odd that they've just all suddenly gone over there with no land bridge. Could they have already been there? And that's the big question. And there is evidence that we've got in caves in Ireland 33,000 years ago, they've got evidence of, of marks on bones and, and so on. And you're thinking, well, oh, really? Yeah, okay. Cremations 10,000 years ago. Uh, and yes, and so, so this is all, so yeah, let, let's talk about, let's talk about boats and coracles and, and, mm. and what you could do, you'd have, you could, you could halve a tree a really heavy tree trunk um, and you could get quite a wide tree trunk and you could carry quite a lot in there. Yeah. A, a few paddles, mm. a few animals, a couple of statues of Lloyd George, you're made. <laughs> do, do, do you guys really want a bad joke? A bad joke? Yeah, I've got to give you two. I've got to give you two. And uh, we'll, we'll finish with the questions. If when Liz Truss stops becoming prime minister, she'll be good in a roof as a roof truss. Um, <laughs> and, and then what we've got to do, we've got to do Ricky Shunak, right? Uh, um, he, 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 he went to a bankers conference the other day, right? And the bankers were all sat in the room. Um, and he was really disappointed he wasn't prime minister. Uh, and one of the uh, bankers turned around and said, look, Rick, uh, Ricky, we've lost interest. <laughs> you laughed. I, I thought it was funny. Anyway, right, right. Any, any, any more? We, we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to do the Isle of Man anyway. It's just, just not possible. So, um, um, but Anne, um, have, um, Anne and Steve, have you got any questions? Nothing else for me. Thanks. No, no. I'm, I'm, um, I'm. It's an ongoing debate, isn't it? <laughs> An ongoing, oh, totally ongoing. I, 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 tell I keep you what, thinking I, of the west coast of Ireland, you know, and those lovely fortresses, you know, on on. Uh, but they're Iron Age, aren't they? Yes, they are. I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you just one last thing, right? And then we'll call it a day. So, um, we go there. Oh, we were gonna do. Well, hang on. Where, where was my thing on you? Um, ah, right, yeah. What it was, we were going to look at a site um, in in the Isle of Man, on the Isle of Man, and basically, they they've they found uh, alongside the airport um, this wonderful building, and I just didn't want to rush it. And then they, we we did this, and uh, mm. and yeah, we, we'll we, we'll we'll come back to this. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Interesting. It certainly is. Mm. So, okay then. So, right. yeah, it is massively sure. interesting. And this is on the Isle of Man, Mesolithic evidence again from 10,000 years ago. What's going on? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of layers. <laughs> there's a lot there's of layers lot of if you layers. want to look at if you want to look at Tim and Gold, exactly. Yeah. A lot of layers, exactly. Like like it. We like it. 
So, okay, okay then. Uh, if there's no more questions, Steve, I, I will see you next next week at seven o'clock, Steve. Yeah. Um, hey, I tell you what, give my love to the gang on Thursday morning. I will do. Uh, and uh, Anne. Um, can I, I, can I do it on my mobile from Donestia? <laughs> uh, you could. No. You, you're seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah, you could give it a go next week. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'd be finding something to eat. Yeah, so anyway, you thanks a lot, and um, I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you the week after. Yeah, I look forward to it. Give my love have to Mary. And, uh, have a give my love trip. to. Thank you. And give my love to Mary. Did you say? Yeah, you know, give my love to Mary. Not you can give your love to Mary, but give my love to Mary. Yeah, we'll they'll have a great trip. I'll tell you what they're doing on this trip quickly. They're they're going to. Uh, they're going to they're going to be in New Quay, and they're going on a, a boat trip. Uh, in the most choppiest weather, so they're all going to be sick oh. afterwards. <laughs> um, during, yeah. What's that? What's that, Steve? Yeah, I'd be sick afterwards or during. Um, and, and then, 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 then oh, they're going to be missing that. Then they're going to go. Then they've got the accommodation, and then they've got. Uh, and then the next day, they're spending a whole day with a medieval expert, looking at four churches, uh, a museum. Um, a couple of castle sites. Um, I'll be seeing them in the morning and um, on on Saturday, um, and on the uh, on the Sunday there's a couple of things planned. At which point they'll probably be too knackered after Saturday anyway. <laughs> the, the the instructions have been given to um, the local historian to wear you out so much uh, on on the Saturday, so I don't have to do anything on the Sunday. Job done. Okay. All right, I, yeah. I look forward to that then, Carl. Well, you, you have paid for it, mate. <laughs> it usually comes up with something, you know, you think, oh, wow, I think I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, I'll see you then. All the best. Bye-bye. Good Look night. Anyway, okay, okay, Anna and Steve, we'll call it a day. I, I will see you um, all next week. Take care. Hey, have Good a great night. time in Spain. San Sebastian, Thank bye. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take bye. care, you two. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Take care, Steve. Right, that was it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for everybody being on there. And uh, sorry, we couldn't have any interaction stuff. It didn't really work. So anyway, um, I will come back on and see if there's any stuff in the chat box anyway and see how it's going. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is Carl James out for